I'm Angela Picard. Uh, this is Skylar Lobo, Soren Butler, Hannah Gillis, and Mary Cruz Sarmiento, and we are Bear Bait Mobile Food Truck. Um, I hope you guys are all starting this presentation with a good taste in your mouth, hopefully. Um, but our mission is to serve customers in a fast, friendly atmosphere while providing low-cost, high-quality dishes with an Alaskan twist. Our aim was to fill a need in the Fairbanks area for a high quality lunch destination that can come to you. There is not a large food truck presence in the interior and we thought by providing the food that we know Alaskans love with the locally grown taste that they can't live without that we couldn't be anything but successful. The challenges lay in forming a menu, finding locations, the product itself, how to serve it, and finally what to charge. Our first step as a business was to put out a survey and then pinpoint our target market as well as how best to serve our customers. And for that, I'm going to hand you over to Skylar. So as a business, just like any food incorporation, we would have to follow legal fees and applications. In order to start the food truck, we would have to have two applications. The first one being an establishment application with an annual fee of $175. And the second one has a plan review, which comes with a one-time fee of $100 or $200. You also have to fill out a commissary letter of agreement, which basically states that we're going to make sure our employees are trained, they know how to wash dishes, they know how to follow the Alaska food code, keep the food warm, stuff like that. Um, and in order to figure out our main target markets, we did market research and found out the vast majority of uh, the participants wanted to stay focused at the UAF campus, particularly the Patty Center. And the second main target was the downtown area, uh, which we decided on the Saddlers parking lot. At UAF, we would have to go through MNS subcontractor, headed by Glenn. Um, he's the one that we would go through and negotiate with, and also figure out the commission, which is normally 20 to 30 percent, which on average, is a 26% revenue charge. This uh, revenue charge covers the card reader and anything we would negotiate throughout the negotiation. Um, one of the drawbacks to setting up at UAF is they would require a $3 million insurance. In order to get an idea of what the $3 million insurance would cost us, we went through Progressive and got a quote at their highest to $2 million and learned that for a year with the brand new truck and a brand new driver with no accidents, it would cost us about $4,000. And then when we move into the Saddlers parking lot during the summertime, we would have to present them with a professional business proposal along with the truck that was presentable in their parking lot. They would then charge us $1,000 a month to rent there. We would have to figure out how to get electric and everything else. And it would also provide us a chance to deal with indirect competition because there's a Star or Sunrise Bagel and Espresso there. Uh, we don't feel that they would be too much of a competition just because they focus more um, in the mornings and uh, smaller mills where we want to focus more in the lunchtime area. And the person that we spoke to was Peter. Um, he was the manager working there and he gave us some great information. Um, another place we want to look at is the farmer's market and local events around town. To, since we're a food truck, we can just get up and go wherever the events are and wherever the population is the most popular that day. And now in order to talk about packaging, I'm going to hand it over to Mary Cruz. From the research that we did, it seems the majority of people like to have uh, uh, the meal of the fall. For that reason, we want to provide this uh, uh, that, that, this type of packaging because it is efficient, simple, and easy to carry. Customers are able to, get, uh, to take their, their meals to, work, to the workplace or to eat with us. A student can similarly take their meals to the dorms or take, take home to eat at their own convenience. According to the home form, in order to recycle form, it needs to be white with a logo in it. Also, it needs to be rinsed before being recycled. According to the company Eco Products, all the products that they sell is can be used as compost. 
because they are made of sugar cane. Sugar cane is a tropical grass. As a result, the product will be break down into small, small. Okay. According to the state of Alaska, Alaska doesn't have. Uh, doesn't, According to, uh, according to the state of Alaska, Alaska doesn't have uh, a program for food waste. Uh, as a okay, now I'm right. right. Moving on to Angela now. Um, the uh, product that Grand Cruz was able to find for our packaging um, is excellent, and as she was saying, it's made of sugar cane. Uh, that allows us to compost it, and as one of our uh, locations is the uh, farmer's market, we thought that by having fresh compost available to us, that it would help us uh, form relationships with other farmers at the uh, farmer's markets, and we thought that that could really only strengthen our local vendor relationships. Uh, so focusing on our product, uh, we preach quality here at Bear Bait, and to maintain that standard, we had to be very picky with our vendors. Uh, Indian Valley Meats provides consistent, high caliber, and local Alaskan game. Uh, they also have the ability to supply a restaurant. Uh, we looked into a couple others, but they didn't quite have uh, the caliber to supply a restaurant with the customers that we're hoping to bring in. Uh, using, lo using locally grown product produce <laughs> is very important to us, and we'll be buying and selling local. And as I said, with the relationships we hope to form at the farmer's market, maybe get some deals out of those people. Oh, maybe. Uh, so this is our menu. Uh, a couple have been passed out, but there weren't enough for everybody to apologize for that. But our first dish that we will be selling is the smoked salmon alfredo. It contains four ounces of smoked salmon in each serving, so you get a lot of that great smoky flavor. Um, our signature creamy alfredo sauce can be pre-made and kept hot for quick service time. So when you think about going to Olive Garden, ordering a pasta dish, it's not going to take us 20 minutes to come give it out to you. So we're not trying to take up your entire lunch break. Uh, our second home style meal is the reindeer lasagna, which we've coined uh, Rudolph's retirement. Um, it's uh, made with delicious ground reindeer meat. Um, it gives the classic dish a more gamey feel, but still very good. Uh, the prices you see up on the slides are not, sadly, not the entire serving price as much as we'd like to be able to give it. This is just the cost of the food and ingredients that are going into each dish. Uh, our third home style meal is spaghetti with meatballs. Uh, the meatballs are not beef, they are actually reindeer. Uh, each would have two to three on it so that everybody can have a pair. Uh, the, our fourth and final home style dish is a delicious, juicy buffalo burger. Um, it can be customized with pepper jack or American cheese, which we would put on the grill so it melts because nobody wants cold cheese. Uh, then it could be further customized on a condiment cart, which would be placed outside of the actual food truck so that you don't have to tell us, uh, onions, lettuce, hold this, put that on, hold this, so we don't have to hold you up or the person behind you. You can do that all for yourself. Uh, we also included three sandwiches on our menu. Uh, the first is a meatball sub, which would have the same succulent meatballs as our spaghetti. Uh, we would then add marinara and gooey cheese for a warm snack. Our second sandwich, if we're you know nice with the term, is a reindeer hot dog, which all of you have hopefully enjoyed today. Um, and our third and final sandwich, which I actually made and is fantastic, is a smoked salmon grilled cheese with uh, Gruyere cheese, and it's crispy and buttery and, you know, everything anyone wants for lunch, which is all we hope to provide. Uh, on our menu is also two soups. The first is a smoked salmon clam chowder, and we gave it clam chowder so that it would have a familiar name so everybody knows what we're talking about, but there is actually no clams instead of clams. We have smoked salmon and bacon, which is <laughs> excellent. Uh, and our our fifth and final thing is a uh, reindeer black bean stew, which is hot and spicy and could banish green clouds on a rainy day. And not that we hope to have any this summer, since last year we got more than enough. But just in case, Fairway will be here to rescue you. And for pricing and the actual price, I'll leave you right off.
All right, so I'm kind of aware of bad news here. Angela explored the cost it would be to create each of our meals, but I had to take into account how, like, what would be a profitable price because we have to consider paying all of our employees, we have to pay for fuel, insurance, all sorts of things. So unfortunately, we can't charge, what, a dollar and 69 cents for Alaskan salmon and such. So here's a view of awesome mountains in Alaska taken from a small airplane on a summer flight. Our goal is to provide food that's as awesome as a view of mountains here in Alaska. So there's a catch with figuring out how to provide our target market with the quality of food they want at the price they want. According to our survey results, our target market typically spends just a mere $7 on lunch at their maximum end, but they also said that quality service and food is one of their most important things in choosing where to eat. So we had to figure out how to provide them with that level of quality of food, but also a price they would be willing to go for. So here's what we have for estimated startup costs. Of course there's a truck. I thought I got off easy having to figure out the pricing of items. It's like a food truck, so we'll need food and a truck. But there's a lot more that goes into it. So a furnished truck, $50,000, that is at the lowest end of a food truck. Um, we don't want to sacrifice the quality of our food or our service, so we decided we would start off with kind of lower end truck and if our business soars, we can work up to a nicer nicer truck, but it will have the basics that we'll need. Our next expense is going to be our small wares, pots and pans and everything we'll need to be preparing our dishes. Estimated 1500 again, starter kit. You may need more as we get rolling. Utensils and paper products, we're gonna start off spending $200. Uh, this is also an estimate because we don't know what our customer base is going to be like. If we get heaps of customers, of course, we're going to be needing to spend more, but that'll get us off the ground and going. And we also have the option of bring your own bowl for the soups and you can get a discount. So depending on the amount of people who take part in that, we may not have needed that much, but. All right, another big expense is our restaurant point of sale kit, which is going to be purchased through Square. They provide in this kit, the newest version of the iPad along with the stand for that iPad and everything you're going to need to make quick and easy transactions. Um, this will be fast for us and also hopefully fast for our customers. It was appealing because it does give the option for customers to choose to either have their receipt emailed or texted, which is a way of going green and stepping in the right direction and we like supporting that. So, Fire extinguisher, a must. Food trucks go up in flames and ours not part of the plan, so $169.99, and oh my gosh, <laughs> there we go, <laughs> put the slide out. Um, okay, and then this ladies <laughs> item, just gonna be all the hidden costs of starting a business. We don't know what they are right now, but we wanna plan ahead and have a bit of a safety net there. So again, bare minimum, 53,058. Moving on to monthly expenses. Labor, depending on the job title of our employees, anywhere between 10 and 15 dollars, and we'll see how tips go. I know at Sunrise, majority of my income was in tips, so that will definitely be added to that. Food products are also going to fluctuate, as we had spoke about before. It's Alaska; prices change constantly. Produce sometimes is our vegetables and such. Sometimes they're going to be in season and not, and prices will vary. So it's gonna kind of up in the air. Internet and phone. Because we did choose to go with the square option with the iPad, internet will be necessary. Um, phone also seemed like a good thing to have in today's day and age, just to make it all a smooth process. Two hundred dollars is going to be the starting package, and we'll see if that will provide us with enough data and fast enough internet speed to uh, operate smoothly. Insurance, as Skylar spoke about before. $5,000 a year is going to be an annual cost. He spoke about $4,000. Progressive gave us a very kind of open-ended guesstimate, we'll say. So that will depend on the amount of coverage we go with. You have something to add in? Since UAF required the um, insurance to be at $3 million and the Progressive was only able to give us a $2 million estimate, 
we're predicting another thousand dollars a year to bump it up to the million, if not more. Yes. All right. Moving on down to fuel, five hundred dollars a month. And at the low end, once again, our fuel expenses are always changing. So, yeah, we'll just have to kind of win that one and see how it goes. Probably vary from month to month and year to year. Once again, we want to set aside an amount of money just for miscellaneous expenses, maybe a flat tire or a broken window. Just want to be ready for that. A little safety net, okay? All right, so there are some risks. Zero to seven dollars. No one spends zero dollars. There's no such thing as a free lunch. So we're going to say one to seven dollars is what our target market was looking for. If we actually price the quality of food they're looking for in that margin, we would go starving. And, um, We'd have a lot of customers that wouldn't be able to cover the cost, so that's not really an option. On the flip side, if we offer products that are too expensive, we're not going to have enough customers. They'll be starving, we'll be starving, and it also won't be good. So finding a balance, we found that 6 to $12 is going to be our sweet spot, a little more than our customer, our target market is used to spending, but we're hoping the quality of food and uh, customer service will be enough to kind of get them to spend that extra buck or two. All right, moving on now to Soren. Good evening, everybody. Um, one of the nice things about being a food truck in relation to advertising, anyway, is that we are basically a moving billboard. Um, in Fairbanks, a town of over 32,000 people, and in the borough, with just a little over 100,000. Um, being able to be seen in, at UAF, Sadler's, or in the farmer's market this summer is going to be huge for us to get our name out there and add some needed publicity. Um, we did, on our survey, we asked the question, where would you be most likely to hear about us on which brand of, or which channel of advertising? And with over a 50% response, uh, or 50% percent of the responses, we got social media, which isn't surprising at all. Um, according to a study done by Pew Research Center in 2014, as of September 2014, 71% of all inter adult internet users had a Facebook account. And this is something we just decided we couldn't miss out on. So our first channel of advertising is going to be social media. It's cheap and it's really easy to use. We already created a Twitter page and a Facebook page, Fairbait, you can look it up. Uh, we capitalized the BA and Bait so that it's easier to find. It comes up quicker on the searches on Facebook, which is nice for our customers. Um, uh, we also plan on adding an Instagram account as well later on. Uh, one of the nice some of the upsides of having social media for us is that we're going to be able to receive feedback from customers right to our Facebook page or Twitter page. Um, if someone takes a picture with our food, hopefully we can repost it, give them a shout out, let our customers know that we support them and we're thankful that they're our customers. Or um, if there's someone has a bad experience, they can post about it on any of our social media sites as well. Um, and not only that we can address it there, not only letting people know that we care about our customers and want to address their issues, but we also um, can fix the know about problems that we might have not known about and can address them in the future. Uh, the final nice thing about social media is the hashtag. Many of you have seen it on Instagram and Twitter, not so much Facebook, um, but what a Twitter does is it allows you to start trending things. So we could use Dishing Up Alaska or hashtag Fairbait. This is going to allow people not, or well, from Alaska too, but outside of Alaska, if they click on those hashtags, they're going to get to see all the posts and pictures that anyone has ever taken of our company, which is going to be huge for getting our name out there for free, again, which is what we're all about. Uh, the second channel of advertising we're planning on using is the local radio. Um, we contacted the local broadcasting station in downtown Fairbanks here, and we're put in contact with Kim Williams, the marketing president down there. She sent us their basic, basic packet of uh, what they would send to an aspiring company trying to advertise on their trying to advertise with the radio. This is going to include the iHeartMedia affiliates, so Kayak FM, Magic 101.1, The Edge 104.7, and News Talk Radio. Uh, the first three companies we plan, or first three radio stations we plan on utilizing more for UAF. It fits in with the demographics a little bit better. While News Radio, when we're down at Sadler's in a more professional environment, we'll be able to utilize that company a little bit more. Or that radio station, excuse me. Uh, lastly, our, our awards, or our rewards, um, <coughs> reward, reward programs and our promotion. Um, two basic ones when we did our survey, uh, people wanted the most was a rewards program like Fred Myers offers. Um, we didn't really realize what amount of a database it required um, to run something like that and it just decided it wasn't really feasible for us. So we decided with a punch card and BYOB bring your own bowl. Um, 
that helps out with our sustainability image and will allow us to maybe appeal to customers we wouldn't have normally appealed to, such as the eco-friendly crowd. Also, we plan on using student and military discounts for, um, to support our military and students as they are part of our target. Um, now that you know a little bit about our company, are there any questions? <laughs> what time of year are you thinking about oh, having this like company be open? So basically during the winter months, um, while the school semesters are going on, our main target is going to be the joy of students and staffs. Whereas when the summer months slow down up at the university, we're planning on moving to Saddlers and focusing more on the downtown area. And then whenever we have local events, as a food truck, we're just able to move and get them and help out with our promotions. To add on that too, we're looking at the farmer's market, um, which it operates on Wednesdays and Saturdays and Sundays from May 9th to beginning of October, right in there roughly. Um, some of the main dishes that you guys had uh, included the reindeer uh, yeah. and uh, salmon, um, but how did you guys come up with the name Beer Bay? Um, well, we were Alaska a la carte, and uh, so many of you remember that guy <laughs> shot down in class <laughs> Uh We wanted to stay high up on the, um, like the Google searches, so we wanted to be alphabetically high in like the yellow pages. So we were looking at like the ABC range. Uh, we thought maybe it was clever because, you know, baiting bears is a thing in Alaska as well as it's an Alaskan, you know, theme and all those things. Plus we found that super cute mascot. We named it Baby Bear Bait. And uh, we really wanted to roll with that mascot because it was cute. So Bear Bait it was. Yes, sir? Yeah, you talked about your target market quite a bit. It wasn't clear to me though what the profile was for that target market. Yeah. Um, uh, basically, the main target market was uh, the range for anybody that goes to school up at UAF. Um, we wanted to be able to provide a lunch that was at a cost they would love and at a food that they would love to come back to. As UAF students ourselves, we know that that would be a great opportunity to succeed in. Not that the Web Center is not great, but <laughs> we thought being able to offer another option that would take their bucks to would be right in there. Yep. And add on to what Skylar and Angela are both saying, we also figured out who our target market would be through doing a survey. That was basically the first thing we did. We figured out what we were going to do, food truck. And then from there, a the survey, and figured out who we would mostly be serving, what they're looking for, price, how often they eat out for lunch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's that's a different segment than you're going to be targeting, though, if you're in the Saddler's parking lot. Well, that's the thing. So according to our survey results, the two most likely locations that people would be inclined to pick up lunch from a food truck would be UAF or Saddler's. So that's how we came to the conclusion that those would be the two places we would target. I think to add to that too. Um Sorry, keep adding on here, but UAF, you know, we can get a bundle of people at UAF target them, but we also realize in the summertime it's going to slow down around here and we would need to keep in business. So, um, as Sadler's is the second option, then we also uh, looked into Farmer's Market too. Yes. You guys did a pretty good job breaking out your annual startup expenses, your single time, and then your talk a little bit about your monthly expenses and where you were estimating those would be. But I didn't see anything in the way of a performance as to what you ended up with a range of where your prices needed to be between six and twelve dollars, but you didn't give me anything in the way of sort of a product that makes as to what your average month would have to look like. Are you operating 22 days out of the month? How many employees are going to be in there? Therefore, what's the overall average cost? So you got a sliding range at the end of that, but it's just sort of like you said, well, we've got these costs, and then some math happens, and then I have to have, we have to sell between six and 12. That's, I, you, you just change ranges though, man. I'm not yeah. quite seeing what would your performing year have to look like, especially one of the first things he pointed out, if I'm interpreting it correctly, is you gotta pay 26 points of your revenue to do business up here. Um, at UAF, you get the card reader and to be able to take your bear bucks and to be on campus. So you sell $4 and one goes to the year. Yes, correct. 
That's an impressive slice. That's, uh, yeah. uh, that's, that's pretty it's, savagely it's, variable. Over I mean, it's an absolutely huge chunk of your revenue to have 25% of it disappear off the top. But then you also have to think about it that the college population is a huge chunk of Fairbanks that we can't afford even 25%. How far away can you park and not have to worry about paying the slice? Um, once you get off campus, I assume you don't have to anymore. So it seems to me like you're missing an opportunity because if you're, if you're close enough for people to walk. But at negative 60, how far are you willing to walk? Um, well, that being said, <laughs> how far are they going to walk away from a building? That's fair. They'll be hurrying to and from class, that's about it. Yeah. So that's, that's something I think you, you probably need to explore a little bit more is the, the cost is one thing, but you have to translate it to what do you think you're going to be making gross and then what's, it, what's that gross cost you? Because obviously your gross up here is 26% comes right at the top. Whereas if you park over at Campus Corner, your gross profit suddenly goes up. I mean, yeah. I would do the math. <laughs> All, right. All right, if we can, let's break into the, um, go ahead Matt, and then we'll break into the, um, each of you giving a one or two minute wrap up. So this being a principles of marketing focused class, as far as the startup costs and everything that you're presenting there, I mean, a big thing in your industry is going to be how you brand yourself initially and how you separate from any of the other either food trucks that are already here in town or the mobile businesses, the coffee stands, all of that. Um, I didn't get a good appreciation for in the startup costs outside of social media because social media has its own costs. It's not a free enterprise system. So can you kind of break down what your marketing efforts are about how much they cost in terms of your startup? Right, so when I said free on social media, what we did right there is free. I mean, I have had some experiences with social media as far as um, having a, a group page or something and you can pay to promote it. That's, that's what I've seen in my experiences. You can pay Facebook and they will send out your, um, you know, ad, when someone's looking down their feed, they'll be able to see your company, just random pop-ups like that. Um, there, there are costs associated with Facebook, and we didn't really discuss as far as promoting it within Facebook, you know, have paying Facebook to send it out. And then I also have the exact numbers of the radio, um, the commercials in my backpack. If, if, you didn't mind, if, you didn't, if you don't mind me getting them, I can tell you them. No, it's okay. fine. The, the greater point to it is that you know, having an online presence sounds very easy, but when you dig into it, there's a huge cost that's associated with it. So you're going to have other businesses that are paying to have not just Facebook promotions, but search engine optimization and all these other little ways that they can show up first and higher in the list. So from that standpoint, within your first, you know, 60 to 90 days when you launch this business, how are you going to draw people to you? And so whether it's you know driving around, you know, using the truck from that standpoint, radio is fine, but which kind of time frames are you gonna go at and specifically use to your advantage? And then given the, the nature of the, the people that you're focusing on, how do you hit them at the right times to where you can get your product in front of them so that you become relevant? So in terms of your marketing and your focus, I just think in your startup costs and how you're actually gonna use your marketing, from a launch standpoint, you really gotta focus on how do you launch this thing, and then how does it maintain its sustainability over the course of the year? And how does that change between the UAF crowd versus the farmer's market crowd versus the downtown crowd? So those are three different groups of people that might be wildly different in how you approach it. Um, as, far as, as far as the paid social media, are one of our other things that we discussed that didn't really get talked about is that we would try and hire primarily college students, and we were also hoping that that within itself would can you come visit me at work? And would sort of draw a crowd in that way as well. And then, so when our survey went out, it was us sharing it on our Facebooks and our friends and parents and grandparents. And, and we <laughs> came back with 71 responses from, I mean, no, no payment going out. And we were hoping that those 71 responses were reflective of a larger crowd that was at least seeing our survey. And if that was the first thing that happened is our page got shared, and I mean, our page, our fake page, and you do when you sign up a, face, a Facebook for a business have to tell them if it's real or not. But ours wasn't real, and uh, the most we did was me, Soren, and Skyler liked it because we were having trouble finding it for a second, but we liked it, and as soon as that happened, we had other people's friends commenting on it, and because Skyler had some, said something to one of his friends about, oh no, it's not real, it's not real. <laughs> we had comments on it, and we're hoping that that's also reflective of 
us with very little work on our part and not spending any money at all because we are broke college students. <laughs> and getting at least that little response in that little time will hopefully be reflective of a better, you know, reflect um Water or something? Yes. 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 some of the, the focus on the local and eco-friendly, I think that's a huge connection. It's pretty popular now amongst you know, movements in food. Um, I do agree that the mobile food market is a very difficult business to stay relevant and stay in business in. So I would like to hear a little more maybe about some of the mechanics of what you think a manageable staff size is and how you would actually build that into the incorporation of making your business. Um, startup costs, there's nothing in there for wages or taxes or quarterly income savings, all these things that go along with having a staff, um, workers' compensation, huge amount of variables that go into starting your business and keeping those in there, but they're not really reflected in that standpoint. Um, you know, and then what's a manageable staff size for year-round operations? Do we surge in the summer months? You know, do we scale down in the winter months? And kind of what's our plan for keeping this thing going over time? Um, I like the survey results and the advertising data. I have a couple other little questions here. Oh, um, I didn't really hear you say how much you could make for any given thing. If you're lunchtime, if you're like, how, how many products can you produce? And if we have one food truck, what max meals can we make in a three or four hour window? If you can kind of narrow it down that way, that's going to help refine a lot of your margins so you understand how much money can we make? You know, how many staff members do you really need? Who's doing what activities? I think if you can refine it a little bit with that, it might give you a greater idea. Hey, I can only make 300 servings of lasagna in any given afternoon. My max income is X. And then you can kind of pare it down from there into what you can realistically pull in at any, any given time. Um, marketing costs, I will tell you, launching a business, just set aside lots of money for marketing costs. <laughs> That's the exact figure. <laughs> Whatever you think it's going to be, multiply it by like five or six. Put a zero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just be prepared for every advertiser to come seek you out as far as launching a business. Um, that's it. I, I like the energy. I think having samples is a wise idea. Um, getting out there and meeting people and you know showing them your product and demonstrating things. Um, I really like that aspect of it. I would say there's danger in trying to just say, hey, we're going to do it specific to UIF. If you're going to do it that way, you know, the mobility side of it kind of loses some of its flair. So I think if you had a rotation of little stops where you're going to hit around town, or even if you pared it down like the Falafel place where they were only open one day a week originally, and everybody kind of surged into that, and it 
made a whole bunch of money and kind of kept their own business. So, that might be going forward. Okay, thank you. Well, I already did my bit on the business uh, stuff. Um, I'll advise this. It's a 300 level marketing course. Um, I'm going to advise all of you to do uh, the funny fest or go see more stand up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> go practice bombing in front of an audience. Because the whole thing is that this thing that you get worried about, you all got worked up and you got three more teams that are following, and everybody's worked up about this piece of it. This is not the piece to be worried about. You know, the adults in the back row, we've all had bits and pieces. We, we can tell you the things that you should be afraid of, you're not even aware of right now. <laughs> so when it comes to public speaking and making your pitch, you've got to get pet. You have to get over that first hurdle because, again, doing this presentation thing, this is the least of your worries. Also, and this is a foodie question, how many of you know how to cook pasta? Okay, so... How much pasta can you have ready in anticipation before it gets too soggy? Um, up to a pound in a, in okay. a big crock pot before uh, How many people does a pound serve? Seven. So seven. And then the, do the next batch, how long does it take to get another pound of pasta? Um, well, I had a thing in there about uh, refilling the noodles at 25%, so when it got down to 25%, we'd start restocking, and hopefully whoever right. came in at the And do you know how they do it at, at uh, fast pasta places? They pre-boil. Have it half cooked. Or They'll do a pre-boil. Yeah. And they'll freeze it. So there, there are ways around that. Again, just it's a foodie thing because I do competitive barbecue. <laughs> 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 food, truck, food truck would be a difficult thing, I think, with all that. Both the pasta and the, uh, the griddle and everything like that, there would be quite the dance with, uh, around the people that were cooking on that. So we have the now you're back to the insurance piece. <laughs> <laughs> but overall, good presentation for, for what you guys are doing. Like I said, uh, get out there and try doing stand up comedy and just listen to the. You get, Instead of laughter, if you live through that, everything else is funny. Everything after that is going to be just fine, I promise. Thank you. I like the presentation of the presentation, the uniforms, the samples, handing out the menus. Um, good consistency there. Good consistency in the PowerPoint from presenter to presenter. Obviously, uh, worked on it together. and. I could see 